Hello, and welcome again to the hobo and his girlfriend wrestling podcast. I am the one and only Hobo Tom. I think I finally figured out the perfect alignment for my computer, which is rare. So again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Um, again, cheers, folks, because it's 1.30 a.m.? Is that too early to drink, or is it just late enough? I don't know. I don't care. This is my last beer before Ash Wednesday. No booze. No meat. No sugars. No soda. Give up all those bad things for 40 days and 40 nights. And let my system clean out. So, therefore, I'm going to party up for at least today and tomorrow. Because, well, probably end today. Because today's Mardi Gras. Woohoo! So, I have to finish off whatever booze I have before midnight tomorrow. So, then after that, I'm a dry, sober hobo. Never a good thing. But I'm not here to talk about that. I'll talk a little bit about some programming notes later. But I'm here to talk about Monday Night Raw. This was a weird show. And the fact the past couple of shows have been really good. What if I do that? Oh, wow. Look at that. I can't read my notes. I'm look at the camera at the same time. Like a hobo teleprompter. Indeed. This is kind of a weird show. Um, it featured a lot of recaps. Oh, and eventually... Where is that card? Oh, here it is. I'm be plugging this again. I haven't plugged this in a while. Eventually coming to Daytona Beach, we're going to have a Southern Pro Lucha Libre. I haven't shown this in a while. And I should make a picture. So, yeah. Because actually, well, I'll, I'll get to that one again to my program. Note. So, hopefully, Southern Pro Lucha Libre is coming soon to the Daytona Beach area, even if it's out in Daltona. I would actually request a day off from work, assuming I still have work. <laughs> And I'll do a live stream from there. So it should be interesting. But now, no more about that and stuff. Let's talk about some Raw. Again, it was an interesting show. Not really the best that they've put on recently. But again, that's holding them to a fairly high standard. But for the most of it, it was okay. I don't think it had any real standout moments. It had some good moments. It had some confusing moments. And again, it had a really good ending. So it actually made you watch the whole show. Which is always a good... Which is, or at least, the, their ratings a very good thing. So we start off, uh, Roman Reigns. He, uh, he cuts his promo. Um, it's a whole recap. Again, Joe and I am very glad you are doing well. Trust me, I was one of those people when I would go to church when I could. So you know what? Joe and I has cancer. Wish that on no one. Please, good Lord, look down upon him kindly. So that's one big thing. And then we have Seth comes out. He's so happy that Roman Reigns is back. That's pretty cool. I don't know how... Well, I'll get to that next. So they said, you know what? Roman Reigns says they're, we're missing one more brother. So we're going to have a Shield reunion. Um, I think I tuned out of wrestling when they were the Shield. I saw it a little bit on a DVD for 2013's Greatest Matches. It was okay. Sierra, Hotel, Echo, India, Lima, Delta. Shield. 
So then, of course, they want Dean to come out. Mainly because not all of them might, not all of them will be around. Are these wrestlers breaking kayfabe more? Is kayfabe dead? Or was kayfabe kicked out of the locker room? Like, Dean obviously was, and I'll get to that. So, as Dean's trying to make his way down to the stage, he's like, no, 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 I'm, uh, he gets smacked over the back with a guitar. The guitar shot heard, heard around the world. In fact, that's pretty notice. That's pretty noteworthy, mainly because a haunty conky tonk man, the man who brought in that guitar shot, is being inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. Cheers to you, tonk man. Gee, he's old. He's outlived a lot of wrestlers too. Wow. But I guess, I guess that Elvis impersonator gimmick's pretty safe with him, though. So then, um, you start for a match. The six-man tag match. Finn Balor, Kurt Angle, and Braun Strowman versus Drew McIntyre, Bobby Lashley, and Baron Corbin. Haven't we seen this match before? It was a good match. Um, it's really hard to complain. I mean, all of these people individually can put on a good match. I think it's just getting weary of it because they seem to rehash a bunch of stuff. And, well, well, I'll get to some other aspects a little bit later. But, again, again it only shows the strengths of the wrestlers. Ron's just so strong. And there were there were some new twists in this. I'll give it that much. Again, if you're bad, I'll say you're bad. If you're good, I'll say you're good. So Braun again, he's too strong. Finn again, he's the fastest one there. Unfortunately, he is not the strongest one there. Um, I think the one my only compl real complaint. Baron Corbin uses a twelve to six elbow. And I know anyone. In the past, he's done the tricep to the head, which isn't going to really bust the open. But he's been going after like the shoulders and stuff, and just doesn't look that as impactful. I'm sure, it probably hurts. Um, they isolated Finn for a while. Again, Finn can still fly. You did that uh, top rope suicide of Tope or, or suicido, whatever they. The top rope flippy thing. And again, he landed that pretty good. But the problem is that he got isolated. I guess three big guys. One small guy. Three. Or one. Three. Or one. I feel like I'm in the... I, 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 I'm Tom and when I think like that. Ugh. Again, I'm not a big fan of any going to any doctors. Um, Kurt Angle eventually does get the hot tag. <laughs> Braun Strowman. He does the runaround thing. Because mainly Finn got on the outside. Got crushed against the ring post by Bobby Lashley. Braun starts to do his, his runaround thing. Leo Rush needs better ring awareness. Leo Rush, I think, got killed. I think we witnessed murder on TV. Mainly because as Braun's doing his run around the ring thing, aiming for Bobby Lashley. Bobby Lashley is smart, okay? He's been in this business a while. Leo Rush did not know where he was. And he was right by the timekeeper's area. Bobby Lashley olayed Braun Strowman. Sorry about that. That's got the shower heads in my ear. Into the timekeeper's area where Leo Rush was. 
Leo Rush looked like a dead body. Man, he just laid there. Eventually, I think we are going to see a Leo Rush face turn against Bobby Lash. We'll see what happens. Um, but then they get back in the ring. I think they just beat up Finn a lot. And I want to say Lashley hit him with a spear, and that's kind of the last thing I remember. Drew Baron and Bobby Lashley get the win. It was a fun cheeseburger match. So hopefully something happens fast lane. Because again, it's kind of getting kind of boring. Then you have a quick heavy machinery promo. Hey, Tucker! Otis Dozovich is still the best. Tucker Knight's pretty good. Otis Dozovich definitely has all the charisma in that group. And then they show the, loose, the loser's locker room for tag, the tag team division. division. You have the Ascension, Hawkins and Ryder, and the B team. And he's just like, we can't let them step in here. It's like, dude, you guys are the loser locker room. I mean, you're literally named the B team. Okay, not the A team, even though there are copyrights and legal stuff involved with that. You're still the B team. So the next match we have, we have Natalia versus Ruby Riot. Wait a second. That's right. I thought they already blew off their feud at, was it Extreme Rules or TLC? It was sometime like a few months ago, though. Ruby Riot's changing, though. She did something to her hair. It's all braided and nice. I missed it when I was like short and punk rockish. Like a punk rock pixie haircut. <coughs> oh, excuse me. But it's okay. It's different. But still, though, I thought this feud was over. And this was a weird match. It was... I, I hate to say that these two could put in a bad match. But this wasn't really good. I think it ended up with Natalia getting a roll-up win on Ruby Riot. I don't think Morgan or Liv actually tried to interfere. And why are they there? I have no idea. So Natalia put in the sharpshooter. Ruby Riot tried to fight out of it, slapped her in the face once, and then it was some weird roll up cradle thing. And Natalia won with a pinfall. And then Lacey Evans shows up. Weird. Only because I've seen it before, and they're not really doing much. This match is really a ham sandwich. And then we there's a Batista flashback, but we did to Ric Flair, which was pretty good. There's um, some people from Saturday Night Live. I don't think I've seen Saturday Night Live since. Jeez. I think the early 2000s? Yeah. Last time I saw Saturday Night Live, there was an advertisement for The Living Dead, the musical. That tells you how long 
I haven't seen that show. And they're there as guest commentators? I have no idea. I don't even care. Then Triple H came out. <laughs> Batista's gives like an iPhone <laughs> promo. <laughs> Runs down the Philly crowd. He's so good. Uh, Triple H takes kayfabe. Wow. Kayfabe's really going the way of the dodo bird. Ooh, that's a good title. I'll remember that one. Um, but then again, he said, I wanted to celebrate Richard Fleer. And it's like, wait a second. That's Ric Flair. Oh, wait. Okay, whatever. Um, so again, it was a pretty good good promo. Again, he accepts his challenge. And then there's another recap of the Ronda. And I'm, Again, this show is very recap heavy, which is not something I like. Then you have a Stephanie McMahon promo. Then Roman Reigns finds Dean in like the bowels of the arena. Did Dean get kicked out of the locker room? Yeah, that or does Dean like locker room? I don't know. You never know. And then we, we have a gauntlet match. And wow, this was a short gauntlet match, probably the shortest gauntlet match in a while. So short, if I wanted to finish this beer and watch the match, the match would be over before I finish this amazingly tall can of beer. Get that. So good. So Heavy Machinery starts off versus the B team. A pretty quick match. Um, Tucker Knight gets involved a little bit. They hit their signature, they hit their finishing move, the compactor. Still looks very good. Poor Bo Dallas, he got compacted. They keep on going. It's hard to complain because at least Heavy Machinery is being book strong. So I can't really complain about that. I mean, they're not having a job out at least, which is pretty good. But then the Ascension come in. The Ascension looks stronger. And for a while, I thought the Ascension was actually going to go over. But then again, um, they work over Tucker Knight pretty good. Otis Dozovich comes in. Otis Dozovich saves the day. The Ascension lose. Then the next, then the final team. Is that all the tag teams they actually do have? Some of the only other teams. The Revival? Gable and Rude? Wow. Those are the only teams. I do have to say, I'm only a couple years younger. I think I'm only 10 years younger or so. Granted, I do not have... I don't know. Maybe I do have as much hair as Triple H. I'll tell you what, my forehead is a lot less wrinkly. He has pug face. <laughs> Enough about that. Um, then, again, Otis Dozovich comes in. Cleans house. And then we have the third team of Zack Ryder and Kurt Hawkins. Quick! <laughs> Nothing else to say about that. Um, Otis hits the Caterpillar, which is the kind of worm with the elbow drop. And then it hits a pop-up body slam, which is pretty impressive looking. Gets the win. Heavy Machinery gets over. Otis Dozovich looks the strongest of them all. And you know what? It's Heavy Machinery. They will always get a cheeseburger rating from me. And now we have Charlie Caruso. She shrunk. Either that or Charlotte grew. I'll have to say Charlotte was a good almost head and a half taller than Charlie. And again, this is just a Charlotte Flair promo. And it was okay. 
nothing really too spectacular to talk about there. And then that leads us then to the Dean versus Elias match. Again, Dean gets interrupted by Seth, and Seth kind of has made like an old fashioned fort out of sound crates or whatever moving crates they use. He made a fort out of it. That's all that you have to know. Seth's not really happy with Dean. Dean's like, I could care less. Leave me alone. I want to be in my own little fort. You don't know the secret password. Get out. <laughs> hey, Fave Ted, or is or is there a secret password? I'll have to think about that one. Um, so then, of course, we have... Or, you know what, the third possibility. I know in the past it's, it's happened to wrestlers. Maybe you got kicked out of the locker room. Hit the road, Jack. Don't you come back no more, no more, no more. Let's get a good stadium song. Na, 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 na. Na, 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 na. Hey, hey. Goodbye. And if you want to see more of the hobo singing, just stay tuned for my year-long retrospective. That's a plug. Um, so we have our Dean versus Elias match. Elias is great. He runs down the Philly crowd. He has to be careful. That Philly crowd does not put up with his junk. They have none of it. They just start booing every time he tries to talk. Boo! Or even when he tries to talk, oh, walk with a lie. I even think they said don't walk with Elias. Don't walk with Elias. You know, that's Seven Nation Army theme. That's pretty impressive. I've heard. Oh, Alistair Black. Oh, Alistair Black. Again, if you watch my YouTube channel, they were doing the Seven Nation Army to Alistair Black here in Daytona Beach. Which is a very interesting crowd, by the way. Again, I nailed that crowd when I made it. You had wrestling fans wearing wrestling t-shirts. You had people wearing normal sweatshirts. And you had strippers. Or probably prostitutes. Hookers. Or I guess sometimes they're called escorts. Yes. Escorts. And Philly crowd is having none of it. Um, Dean Ambrose comes in. Both men are decide to wrestle comfy. They decide to wrestle in jeans. Good for them. Jeans are actually pretty comfy. Especially, I guess, if you're wrestling, if you just wear some like boxer briefs, probably even more comfy that way. Ooh, it's a good wrestling combination. Just jeans and boxer, and like r shoes, wrestling shoes. I'll talk about shoes in a little bit. I do not know a lot about shoes. But I saw something impressive, though. So again, Elias, again, he's a strong of the two. Dean Ambrose, he's getting a lot of good offense in. Um, again, very much very classic Dean Ambrose. way he gets offense. Very unpredictable. Kind of harkening back to his days as WWE champion. And figure out... Hard to figure out what he's going to do next. Oh, um... I'll, I'll get to that next. I actually have some notes. And again, Elias is just too strong. Elias does the Undertaker rope walk thing. Which I don't know if he was gifted up by Undertaker or if he just decided to use it in his repertoire. Um, Dean, however, lost the match. Got hit with a drift away. And then and then Seth and Roman come on stage and Dean, they wanted to jump Elias. Dean just leaves through the crowd. And honestly, that whole match was a cheeseburger. It, was, it wasn't was bad. It was good. It was entertaining. It was a good cheeseburger match.
And then, of course, as I was alluding to, uh, Seth and Dean come out. Um, they beat up Elias a little bit. Then Drew, Baron, uh, they chase him out of the ring. They send Hall for a little bit, trying to egg Dean to get back in. Dean's like, yeah, no, I'm not, not dealing with any of that anymore. Then Baron Corbin, Drew, Drew McIntyre, and Bobby Lashley come out. So it's a three-on-two situation. They they start just getting beat up. Eventually, Dean does get in the ring. You see the the shield fist bump thing. Yay! Yay, shield. Um, they're going to have a match. It's going to be the last shield reunion match at Fastlane. This Fastlane minus probably the women's match and the Daniel Bryan. Kevin Owens match. With the exception of those two, this kind of feels like a throwaway just get out of the way pay-per-view. Should be only about 10 bucks. Not freaking 40. And then of course we have um, on, on the next nomination to the WWE Hall of Fame is Tori Wilson. I think she was there for a decent stint, so... I honestly thought Molly Holly was going to get in. Molly Holly really probably deserves to get more in the Hall of Fame than Tori Wilson. My opinion. And it's probably a bad opinion of that. Then you have uh, a Becky promo. Is Becky that short or did Charlie grow? Never understand that. And our next match, we have Sasha Banks versus Tamina. Everyone's changing their hair up. Sasha's hair looked a lighter purplish color. It got long, too. I think it reaches, like, the small of her back. It has to be awkward. I know in high school, I think when we had to sit in the bleachers, like, in, like, the true... Bleachers, bleachers section of the bleachers. I think some girl did have long hair, and I kind of pinched it a few times because your knees would hit the hairs in front of you. So that has to be kind of weird. I wonder if that gets like caught in the ropes, the turnbuckles. Again, I don't have that worry at least. No one's gonna pull this luscious. Wait. There is no hair up there. Nothing's luscious about that. But I guess I could only dream to have hair like Sasha Banks. That'd <laughs> be pissed. And she took on Tamina. Tamina still looks like a Klingon. Uh, Tamina is definitely the stronger of the two. Sasha Banks shows off her quickness a little bit. A little bit, again, more, more agile than Tamina. However, in each person's corner, Bailey's in, of course, Sasha's corner. Those women's belts actually do look really good, though. Whoever designed those belts, again, they deserve they deserve a, they deserve a shiny quarter for the, for those belts. Um, eventually, Nia Jax does try to interfere with the match. Bailey comes out; she just is Bailey to the side, distracts Sasha Banks long enough where Tamina hits like a super kick on her and pins her. We know who's not winning. And fast now, the math works. And Thursday, I don't know. We might hear. I might see if I can get Doctor Tom back. We'll we'll see how that goes. I have a lot of videos to make. So again, this was an okay match. Let's say ham sandwich. It's hard to say it was good. Hard to say it was bad. It's just a ham sandwich. And then Calvin Yost. I guess I'm saying that name right. He pokes an angry bear, and that bear's name is Braun Strowman. Braun picks him up pretty easily by the neck. So that was fairly impressive. And held him there 
for the entire commercial break. So again, that was pretty interesting. Then we get into the next match, which is what we saw last week. Or was it two weeks ago? No, it was last week. Or was it two weeks ago? I don't know if you forget. This is the second time we've seen this match. We have the Revival. We have new ring gear. They have new jackets, and they look pretty good. They look like a modern version of the Minnesota Wrecking Crew's jackets. A little bit more modern. Again, a little, again, just like the... Probably more like the Brain Buster jackets. Again, they harken back to an older time when tag team wrestling was really an art form. And they take on Alistair Black and King Ricochet. Always be King Ricochet to me. This was good stuff for about 70% of the match. Um, Alistair Black's a great striker. He works really good with the Revival. Um, works good within their style system. It was fun. There was a good exchange with him and both um, Dash and Dawson. Rick Shade c comes in and elevates the match to another level, though. He can run with the best of them, with maybe the exception of Leo Rush. That's saying something, though. And maybe Lucha House. He's on the same level with Lucha House Party. Leo Rush is, is one. Ricochet's like 2A. Then, like, Lucha House Parties to B, C, and D. As far as, as far as speed and agility go in the ring. I mean, they just... No one can touch those four. That would... Oh, oh, if they had a five-man challenge match. Oh! That would be amazing. Again, Ricochet, he can do the flippy-flippy stuff. He can sell. He can do everything. Um, again, Heel Gable and Heel Rude, who are glorious. Again, I can do that now because now I think they're going to be heels, which will be good because Bobby Rude is much better being the heel versus a smiling baby face. That's pretty cool. They come in and watch the match for a while. However, um, eventually the revival will get tossed out of the ring by Ricochet. And Alistair Black. And they just jump him. You know, that means Bebe. Only one thing when something like that happens. We got ourselves a dust to finish, Bebe. Nobody wins. Except for this is the WWE sweetheart. Someone has to win. So that means the revival win. Because they got the whooping put on them. They had the the belt whooping in the woodshed, baby. We got taken to the woodshed by Heel Rude and Heel Gable. Oh, those, those, those mean old heels. They don't like no one. So again, um, Ricochet and Alistair Black faint going after them on the outside. Again, they both strike their pose. Amazing stuff. This was a dusted cheese burger, baby. I can understand they lost, but it's a really super protected loss. Again, let's see here. I mean, just amazing stuff. Oh! Renee is freaked out by Alistair Black. She said that like twice. I think she said the first time and it was a mistake because it w wasn't like a live mic. And then like she was prompted. Hey! You better say that line again. Because the whole world says, heard you say it the first time. Pay attention to your script, or you'll be fired. 
Like her husband, Dean Ambrose. You'll have to work. Oh, wow. I don't know what I did to my thumb. It just, like, freaking froze up. I was, like, clawing. Honey! You'll be working. Back in Pro Wrestling Gorilla. Or it's Stampede Wrestling. Oh, I did do something. Um, I don't even know what. Getting old, folks. Getting old sucks. So again, <laughs> that was pretty cool. Then we have uh, Becky Lynch, Charlotte Flair in the ring. Stephanie McMahon calls them both out. Becky has to sign a hold harmless agreement. She just kind of lumps in the ring. It's kind of like contract signing. Again, it's going to be Charlotte Flair versus Becky Lynch for what's supposed to be the vacated Women's Championship. However, that's not the case. Ronda Rousey comes back. Says, what are you talking about, Steph? Don't make me smack you in the mouth. I never vacated my title. I just wanted to fight Becky. So... So hold harmless agreement. So the WWE is no longer responsible for Becky's injuries. She cannot sue them. I guess pro wrestlers can do that. Um, Heel Ronda comes out. This starts to beat Becky down. I hate. She did make some good points though. Um, not so much in their Twitter war. Again. Don't break kayfabe that much. Although I do wonder if she if Becky sent Becky Lynch or Rebecca Quinn. That's breaking kayfabe for you folks. So again, Heel Ronda comes up. He's like, I hate it when you do Becky chants. I gave my heart and soul and all you do is chant for Becky. Becky, Becky, Becky. No. Chant for Ronda. You loved it when I was breaking people and then Becky shows up. I'm going to break Becky's arms. Or something like that. She just said she just hated the Becky chance when I would be in the ring. Makes sense. Whenever they would do the Becky chance, she always looked confused. She's like, why are they cheering for her? They're supposed to be cheering for me. Well, I don't want your fan adoration anymore. Then she just beats down Becky. Charlotte, being the smart heel, says, hey, I have to face her Sunday anyway. Go to town on her. Easier job for numero uno. And that was Raw. Not necessarily a bad show. Oh, and in the end, Stephanie gave some convoluted thing to Charlie. Again, either Stephanie shrunk or Charlie grew. I don't know. I think that was just like, just like they re didn't realize they had two more minutes of airtime. So that was kind of a toss away segment. Overall, it was an okay Raw. It hasn't been as bad as it was in the past. It hasn't been as good, however, as it's been in recent days. So now it's time for me to get to that part of the show where I tell you a little bit about the programming for this week. So again, I'd like to thank everyone that has just watched my Raw review. Again, you can always feel free to comment, leave an email. You can like, share, subscribe, or you can even dislike if you so choose to. If you leave your name and dislike, I have a special something for you. If you leave your name, I also have a very special something for you. Um, so, again, we just got finished with the Raw recap. Tomorrow! The Mardi Gras! I'm going to party in there for a moment to finish off my beer before I start to sober up. Tomorrow, we're going to have two videos. Two videos will come up. One is going to be the first one, I think, or should be first, will be my Mardi Gras special here for the Daytona Beach Bum Fight League Wrestling. And it's a pretty action packed card. We have Twisted Pixie versus Ronda Rousey. Speaking of Ronda Rousey, and a steel cage match here in Daytona Beach. Ooh. We have 
the Cubic Connection versus the Bushwhackers. And because it is a party mood, you cannot have a party without the Techno Blue Ranger. And as he faces on the man who hates all parties, Corporate Tom, he's just going to tell you bunch of bombs and hookers in the crowd, get back to work. You have a unique cruiserweight, always underweight match, and Liam Keller, Crazy Liam, Aiden Awesome, and Taj take on Buddy Murphy, Callisto, and Enzo Mori, with the stipulation being the winner gets a shot at the always underweight championship belt. So that will be some interesting dynamics. Then special match. We have a Hell in a Cell. Probably the first time ever we've actually had a rematch for the world's bestest girlfriend ever belt. Currently held by Mandy Rose. And as she takes on Gigi, Heather, and Hell in a Cell, that should be interesting. I wonder how Steve Daytona ever approved any of these matches. Well, they did have an Inferno match last time. So you never know. And then the main event for the Under the Bridge Championship, it's a ladder match. Hobo Tom versus John Cena, who actually held the Under the Bridge Championship belt. Wow. Versus Diamond Diamondback Jack Maverick versus El Vagabundo Dos Hobo. And that's going to be a ladder match. So that should also be interesting. On And then later Tuesday night, probably Wednesday morning-ish, will be my SmackDown review. Thursday or pro, probably Thursday, Thursday night, I'll probably have my predictions for Fast Lanes. Then Sunday will be my Fast Lane live streaming show. Wow. So that's a lot of wrestling. The following week, I think it's just the two shows. And then I hope to get to Sanford for NXT on the 21st and back to Daytona Beach on the 28th. So let's see what happens. Again, thank you guys. Have a good night. Bye.